What's up, Cal gang? All right, so it wants us to find and sketch the domain of this big function, right? So how do we do this, right? Well, we want to find where the function is not, uh, not you know, explained, basically. Where does the function not, not exist, basically? Where does it not work? So, yeah, you're basically working backwards. To find the domain, you want to find where it's not the domain. So let's see. So when we have all these square roots, a good thing about square roots is that, well, they can't be negative, right? We know that they can't be negative. So we can break down each part to define its domain, right? So this part here, for example, we know that this has to be greater than or equal to zero, otherwise it's not defined, right? So let's write that. Zero is less than or equal to square root of four minus x squared. So of course you can get rid of the square root. Just square both sides. It's gonna be zero still on the other side. And then you can move the x squared over. So the x squared is less than or equal to four. So that would mean that x is less than or equal to plus or minus two, right? Which means that, uh, you could say two, negative two less than or equal to or greater than x is less than or equal to two. All right, so that's one domain right there. Let's do it for the rest of them. All right, so of course, zero is less than or, or greater than or equal to square root of this. So if you can square both sides, nine minus y squared. Of course, you're gonna move the y over. You're gonna see that y is less than or equal to plus or minus three, or you know, basically. You, you probably don't write this actually. Just go ahead and switch over to this thing because, you know, doesn't work that well. So it's gonna be negative three is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to three. Same thing for z over here. We'll have, uh, so it'll be like z squared is less than or equal to one. So then, you know, negative one is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to one. All right, so this is a domain right here, really. We just have to put it in a domain form. Let's do that. Our domain, d, is equal to, use these uh, weird brackets, x, y, z, and then a bar. I don't know why it's function like this. It just is, so write it like this. So then you have negative two, is less than or equal to an x, is less than or equal to two. Uh, negative three is comments y. Oh, why am I doing it like that? Three, and then negative one, is less than or equal to z, is less than or equal to one. Boom, that's our domain. That's how you write it out. Don't write it all sideways like I did. You can see it, right? It's in the glare, I'm sorry, but you know what it is. All right, so how do we draw this? Well. And we just try it, right? So z has to be greater than negative one, but greater than one, or less than, or it's in this range between negative one and one. X is in this range between negative two and two, and y is in this range between negative three and three. So we're just gonna have a box, right? Just gonna look, this is gonna be a really crude drawing, but you're gonna get the point of it, right? Boom, and then this goes up to one, and then down to negative one. So it's gonna be like, like a, like a so. And that's our domain, it's the inside of this. So you probably wanna shade this. If you weren't on an expo marker, that's domain right there. All right, that's how you find the domain of these functions. Just find out where it doesn't exist, where you can't uh, have a function basically, and uh, you'll be set, and just write it out. So yeah, that's how you solve these kind of problems. Good luck in your calc homework, guys.